This is Radio Mime Troop, and welcome to Tales of the Resistance, Volume 2, Persistence, a summer of original radio podcast political comedies by the confusingly named, always radical, and never ever silent San Francisco Mime Troop. Every week, we will be presenting one episode written, directed, and performed by Mime Troop veterans and dealing with the revolutionary issues of the day. This week's story, Mysterious Mysteries, the tale of the Black Hello! Hello, and welcome, yes, welcome, to another chapter of... Mysterious Mysteries! It is I, your host, and your comrade, inviting you to join me as we explore the twists and turns of the human and inhuman mind. But these are not stories of calm reflection, no. These are tales designed to stab you in the brain with truth! Forgive me. I hope I didn't alarm you. It's just that sometimes, when I think about our little mysteries, I get overwhelmed with the urgent need for revolutionary justice! I mean, excited with the idea of telling stories. Stories, soothing, gentle, inspiring, agitating, howling with a fist in the air and a heroic shout of... Power to the people. Oh, yes, power to the people. You understand how I feel? After all, what's so mysterious about... Justice. We'll find out in this week's story as... Mysterious Mysteries! Presents the tale of the Black Fox. And action! My fellow Americans, citizens, real citizens, I want to ask you, Why are things falling apart in our country? Our families, our cities, even our elections? Do you know? Because I sure do, and I think you do too. Inside, where the liberal media can't penetrate, deep in your patriotic heart, whose beating the leftists wanna stop, deep in your soul, which the atheists say doesn't even exist. You know what's wrong with America. It's socialism. Cut! What? We blew a light. Hey, you! Uh, You want me to get another bulb? No, I want a ham sandwich on rye. Of course I want another bulb! Oh, yes, sir. Uh, Back in a minute. It will just be a few minutes, Angelica. It better be. They better not keep you waiting. After all, you're Angelica Phoenix, the rising star of conservative news. The only black woman willing to tell the audience the truth. And you know what it takes to get ahead. Hello? Angelica, this is Brad. Brad. Mr. Astaroff? And how are you doing this fine evening? I'm I'm doing just fine, Mr. Astaroff. Good. Do you have a moment? Well, we're about to reshoot my commentary for this Saturday. Wonderful. So you can come up to my office. But... Now. Yes. Of course, Mr. Astaroff. I'll be up in just a moment. That's right, Angelica. You'd better get up there in just a moment. You may be smart and beautiful, but you know that as a black woman, all eyes are always on you, waiting for you to slip, everyone wondering if you're ever going to show your true (laughs) color. I'll be back in a few. But we still have to shoot the retake. What does it take to get ahead, Angelica? He takes brains. He takes cunning. Uh, But, Miss Phoenix... uh... And most of all, it takes charm. Out of my way, loser. Charm. To remind your boss why he hired a black woman to do on-air editorials. I'm going upstairs to see the boss. Good luck. Luck. 
has nothing to do with it. Upstairs, Angelica. That's where the real power is. And if three years of being a conservative television analyst has taught you anything, it's how important power is. Angelica? Mr. Astaroth? Oh, no, call me Brad. Yes, of course. Brad. Please sit down. Thank you. You know, Angelica, you're becoming a very listened-to voice on the network, and don't think the boys in corporate haven't noticed. A real black, black woman's perspective. Your Saturday commentaries, and I love the title. I'll be right black. Very on brand. Thank you. I try. Drink? No, thank you. A beautiful creature like you should never refuse a drink. I still have to shoot those retakes. From her boss. Yes, thank you. The editorial you did last week, The Dark Side of Civil Rights, only you could get away with calling it that. If Johansson tried that in the 7 p.m. slot, the whole network would be labeled racist by every Black Lives mother in the projects. Thank you. But my favorite was the one you did right before the Georgia runoff election. The privilege of voting. Beautiful, moving, truthful, and the way you summed it up, we live in a capitalist society. A society where scarcity equals value. And if voting is going to continue to have value, maybe it should be restricted to those who've earned and appreciate it. Otherwise... Otherwise, democracy itself may become worthless. A very free market way to say that every Tom, Dick, and Harriet Tubman shouldn't be sticking their ballots in boxes that are none of their business. I just wish a bigger audience could have heard you. It might have made all the difference. Thank you, Mr. Brad. Hey, why are you sitting way over there? Plenty of room here on the couch. I'm fine. Well, as I was saying, a bigger audience. And you know, I'm thinking of producing a new series of editorials. Really? Prime time. And I'm looking for ideas. It's funny you should say that. There's an idea I've been working on about the foundations of American democracy and how we've gone so wrong. It's called We the People. We the people? With a question mark at the end. Yes. It's a very comfortable couch. The way I look at it, when the founding fathers said, we the people, who were they talking about? Not a bunch of wet Mexicans, not a bunch of COVID-19 Asians, and not a bunch of black people who don't appreciate all this country has done for them. I love it. But uh, you, what about uh, your, you know? Yes, yes. I'm black. My ancestors were slaves, yada, yada, yada. But That's why I can ask the question no one else can. Which is? We, the people. Mm, Sounds like a great idea. Doesn't it, though? You know, not every office has a cow. All these leftist protesters talking about fighting for freedom. My family didn't fight for their freedom. They bought themselves fair and square. My great, 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 great grandfather rented himself out for extra money every night after working in the fields. Well, I didn't know slaves were allowed to do that. His master was a very generous man, only took 40%. And when he had earned enough money, he bought himself and his family out of slavery. You know, whenever you talk about your people and bondage, I find it very stimulating. And when they were free, they didn't fight for the right to vote. They waited until they'd earned it. How very American. And that's what gives me the right to say to these Black Lives Matter morons, you want your life to matter? Do something that matters. Get a job. Pull up your pants. Earn the right to be seen as a citizen. Then get back to me. Until then, you can kiss my black ass. And uh, speaking of your... Excuse me, Brad. Um, Hello? We are? I'll come right down. I'm very sorry, Mr. Astaroth. Brad! I have to go back to the studio. Right now? The crew is ready. But my couch... I'd love to stay, but they've been on set almost eight hours, and if we don't finish soon, you know what that means. What? Overtime. Damn unions. All right. But I want to find some time for us to... Talk more about your idea. We, the people. We, the people. With a question mark. Exactly. I better go. Uh, hmm. You know what he really wanted, don't you, Angelica? It isn't enough that you support the man. They always want to treat you like 
the woman to treat you like nothing more than eye candy. In your case, chocolate. And if you ever treat them like the filthy male chauvinist pig criminals they really are, you will never get ahead. It's all part of the business, you tell yourself, as you go back down to the studio. Let's take it from, you know what's wrong with America? It's socialism. And action. You know what's wrong with America? It's socialism. The socialism of big city activists who say your 4th of July hamburger is melting the ice caps. The socialism of college campus intellectuals saying you can't call your children boys or girls anymore. That you have to call them they because we're all supposed to be trans, homo, non-binaries now. But the most dangerous of all is the socialism of the socialists. Of Bernie Black Lives Matter Sanders and Alexandria Antifia Cortez. Well... I may be old-fashioned, but if being capitalist was good enough for my parents, then call me old-fashioned. We need to get the American train back on track. And this train doesn't run through socialist town, where everything is free, where borders mean nothing, where science is truth, and where you can be any day you want to be. No. You know where the train of America runs? It runs right through mom. It runs through hot dogs and apple pie and right through the Constitution. These Reds may have taken the White House and Congress with their stolen election, but they better hear this. The train of American liberty is coming. We're coming. And as for me, well, I'm Angelica Phoenix, and I'll be right black. Did we get it? Uh, it looked perfect to me. I wasn't asking you. Sorry. Let editing know I'll be up soon. Gotcha. Done for the day? Yeah, I'm heading home. What's your hurry? You know, there's a little bar just opened around the corner. I have to start working on my next editorial. They have karaoke. I bet you can sing, girl. Not really. Come on, all of you have a little Cardi B in you. I want you to park that Big Mac truck right in this little garage. Make it cream, make me scream, out in public, make a scene. Come on. I really have to go. And uh, maybe we could come back here and I could edit you? That sounds great, but Astaroth wants a report on my idea for a new commentary series. Uh, a new series? Who's directing? Haven't decided yet. Who's picking? Probably me. Oh. Well then, you have a good night, and I'll see you at the next taping. Hey, miss! Oh, God. Got a dollar? What are you going to do with a dollar? Add it to my savings account? Drugs and booze, that's what you'll buy. People like you don't even spend it on food. Wait, don't go. What is it now? I don't really need the money. Well, I don't have any crap. I need to talk to you. I've been waiting all day for you to come out. Waiting? Right here. The one spot the security cameras can't see. Let go of my arm. I have to tell Help! you. Get off me. Help! Shut up. I'm trying to save you. Save me? Oh, God. You're a Mormon. I'm not a Mormon. Jehovah's Witness. No. Scientologist. Do I look crazy? Get your hands off me. My name is Edo Kawakami. Let me go. Ow! Help! Angelica, change your mind about karaoke? A crazy lady in the parking lot. She grabbed my arm. What? She tried to tell me about Jesus. Slow down. What happened again? She said her name was Edo something. Edo Kawakami. Edo Kawakami. She was dressed in rags. Edo Kawakami. Did I stutter? Yes, that was her name. And she grabbed me at... Where are you going? She's gone. Oh, thank goodness. I've been telling Astaroth we need better security in the parking lot. I wonder. Did she look familiar to you? Why would she look familiar to me? What, because I'm black? You think I hang out with the homeless? No, no. I just wondered what she was doing here. Messing up my Versace jacket is what she was doing. Hido Kawakami. <laughs> I gotta tell Mr. Astaroth. Hey, are you all right, Miss Phoenix? Shut up. Get me some decaf. Shut up! Right away. 
This wouldn't happen if they just got me a limo and a driver, cheap bastards. And familiar, why would I have seen her before? Wait, is it possible? Do I know her from somewhere? Yes, Angelica. Did you recognize that face? An old friend, perhaps. The subject of one of your exposés. A co-worker at some local station you left behind as you clawed your way up the capitalist ladder you love so much. The ladder that will destroy all with its unquenchable lust for power and money and power. Mm, nope. Never saw her before. Just some crazy woman, I guess. Yes, Angelica. Perhaps you are right. Or perhaps you are all so wrong. We'll find out next time, won't we, Angelica? On... And now it's time for... Highball on History. This is Chip Bannister, and welcome to another episode of Eyeball on History, the series where I, Chip Bannister, take you, our listeners, back to key moments in the past, and I, Chip Bannister, talk to history makers at the moment they are making history. Join me, Chip Bannister, as I open the eyeball on history. The year is 1966. The place, the North Oakland Social Services Center, a kind of free legal library. A quiet enough place, full of books and articles. But at this table, in just a few minutes, at this very table that I, Chip Bannister, am standing next to, at this ordinary table, two young men will start a conversation Are that you will... using that table? Uh, pardon me? Uh, me and my friend are working on a project and we need a table. But I'm in the middle... <gasps> oh, yes. Of course, it's all yours. Thanks. Okay, I got John Locke, David Hume, Che Guevara, Malcolm X. That's a lot of books you have there. What? I said that's a lot of books you have there. Yeah, well, like I said, we're working on a project. Yeah, Negroes with Guns, The Wretched of the Earth. Oh, let me go get a copy of the California Penal Code. Excuse me. What is it, man? You're Bobby Seal. Are you a cop? Me? No. Oh, no, no, no. I'm uh, Chip Bannister. What kind of name is Chip? I also got the Constitution. Age of reason, common sense. I hope I'm not interrupting. You kind of are. Can I ask something? Who is this guy? You said his name is Chip Bannister. Chip? And you are Huey P. Newton. He is Bobby Seale. And this is Eyeball on History. Maybe we should change tables. No, no. No, you have to be right here, at this table. That was our plan. What do you want, man? Can you tell me, what are all these books for? Research. Research? For what? Justice. Can't fight for something if you don't clearly know what it is. See, we got a plan. We're putting together brothers and sisters from the streets and the colleges, from the projects and the flats and the hills, everybody, into a new group. A revolutionary political party. Revolutionary? Sometimes if you want to change anything, you got to change everything. And what are you going to call this new political party? The Black Panther Party for Self-Defense. Catchy. It ain't catchy, man. It's revolutionary. Sorry. Genocide and slavery. Stolen land and stolen labor. That's where it all starts. The true history of America. A colonialist and now capitalist philosophy that justifies any crime in the name of power and profit. And this party is going to fight for... Justice, man! Yes, but surely now that the Civil Rights Act of 1965 is the law of the land... What? Are you uh, stupid? No, I'm, I'm just trying to be ironic for our listening audience. You think the capitalists are going to actually give any real power to the people? When in all of history have the oppressors ever unoppressed anyone? When have the colonialists ever uncolonized anything without being forced? 
in the wretched of the earth. Fanon said... Just a moment. For our listeners, that's Franz Fanon, writer, revolutionary, anti-imperialist philosopher. Fanon said, no one can give you freedom. You have to take it. Otherwise, you and the oppressor will always feel like they can take it back. You will always be colonized in your mind. So... Revolution. What happens when the government tries to stop you? They can't stop all of us. I don't know. The police are pretty well armed. We got guns, too. They could kill you. Malcolm X was killed. A lot of revolutionaries have been murdered in the struggle for black liberation. And maybe they wouldn't have been if more of us had fought with them. But it's like Fanon said, because of that colonialist in our heads, telling us to be quiet, telling us to wait, telling us to... To wait until equality and justice is given to us. Well, maybe the only real way to stop the man from beating us down is for us to beat him up. The two of you. It won't just be us. There will be more. The whole nation is going to rise up. And this injustice. And the war in Vietnam. And the poverty. And fight the class war here at home. Oh, so you're socialists. The greatest good for the greatest number, brother. And it's not just about black people. No, man. It's about all working people. We are for the working class in general, but black people in particular because we're the ones so immediately under the gun. Power to the people. And that's why we are putting together this list. Well, it's more like a program. How long will it be? Not too short. Not too long. Maybe like 10. 10 points. A 10-point program. Works for me. And what will the points be? I don't know, man. It's not written yet. It's going to be straightforward. Based on undoing injustices. Um, Okay, okay, okay. Point one, we want freedom. Yeah, and number two has to be jobs. Good jobs. Okay, number two is jobs program. And if the capitalists don't give the people good jobs? Then we got to take the means of production from their greedy asses. That's number three. The chambers of commerce aren't going to like that. Then they really ain't going to like it when we demand the capitalists stop robbing the black communities. They owe us. If the Germans can help the Jews after killing six million of them, then the U.S. should help blacks after killing 50 million of us. Do you think you'll get it? Not if we ask politely. Housing. Yes. Number four. All this segregation and redlining has kept us in slums and ghettos. Landlords knowing we can't live nowhere else, so they charge whatever they want for pigsties. Oh, my God. What? I have an idea. Can I make a suggestion? No, man. But education. Number five. I was going to say education. Real education for our people that exposes where we've been, who we really are. And what they are doing to us today. Yeah. They teach us a bunch of lies so we'll be obedient, so we'll work for them, so we'll keep fighting for this racist country. Got us fighting for their imperialism in Vietnam. Number six. The draft. Exempt black men from the draft. We shouldn't be sent out to kill people of color around the world when we need to be fighting these fascist cops here at home. Number seven, we want an immediate end to police brutality and the murder of black people. Are you willing to fight the police? We ain't going to attack them. We're going to patrol them. Law books in one hand, legal guns in the other. Just to make sure they respect folks' rights. Yeah, cops ain't never been afraid to do whatever they want. Lynch whoever they want, burn whoever they want. If that person is black, from now on, they should be afraid. Self-defense, man. It's all about self-defense. You could get arrested just for talking about this. Jails around the world are full of freedom fighters. Why should it be different here? Besides, no black man in this country ever has or ever can get a fair trial in this big... Since we don't get fair trials, as promised to us by the Constitution, number eight, all jailed black men should be free. And from now on, we should only be tried in front of a jury of our actual peers, not a bunch of white suburbanites scared of any black face they see. That's nine. What else? Oh, we want it all, man. Land, bread, housing clothing, education, justice, and peace. We want the justice do us as citizens. And and we want to have self-determination to decide our own fate as a people. Do we really want to continue to live in a country that beats us, imprisons us, shoots us in the streets whenever it feels like it? We want independence from our oppressors. We hold these truths to be self-evident. Tell me. That all men are created equal. Should we put men and women? It's a quote. We got to be exact. Gotcha. And they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights. And among these are life, liberty, 
and the pursuit of happiness. Ten. Anything else? We just laid out a plan to free all people, man. What did you do today? That last one sounds like it could apply to everyone in the working class. It does. But black people in particular. So you don't hate white people? We told you, man. We don't hate white people. It's about oppression. Hell, y'all oppress each other when you get the chance. Yeah, look at the factories. Look at the British in Ireland. Most white people are just working folk benefiting from a racist system while simultaneously being crushed by a capitalist system. Can't get rid of one without getting rid of the other. And that's why the revolution has to be about freeing everybody. Except the capitalists. Yeah, screw them. Ten points. A ten-point program. You know, they all seem to come down to the same thing. Justice. Yeah, but ten-point program sounds a hell of a lot better than one-point program. And after you get the word out, then what? Then the real work begins. Good luck. We don't need luck, man. We got the truth, and the people will be on our side. Housing, jobs, education, justice. Oh, man, in 20 years, you won't recognize America. And Oakland? Huh. Oakland is going to be beautiful. Yes, well, uh, in any case, I'm glad I could help with your list. You didn't help us, man. You were just here while we wrote it. Sorry. White people, always trying to take credit. Now leave us alone. We got stuff to do. Of course. And so we leave Huey P. Newton and Bobby Seale in their historic quest for justice. If you're going to keep talking, you got to move further away. Yes. So, that's it from 1966. Further. Sorry. 1966, the founding of the Black Panther Party. For self-defense. And we can still hear you. And the writing of the 10-point program. This has been Chip Bannister, and this is Eyeball on History. Shut up, man. Sorry. We're revolutionaries raising our voice. Bombastic slapstick is our weapon of choice. We always draw a crowd. We're red and hot and proud. Silent, no, hell aloud. The San Francisco Mind Troop. A collective with a socialist objective. We put things in perspective with 60 years of free shows in the parks. Sci fi to detective, satire to inductive, tragedy and farce. And farce. So we fought the man with every show. Took a shot at Old Jim Crow. That made the hippie heads go pop with mad cat magic rock. The bourgeois made a scene. Claim we were obscene and, and had us hauled up by the cops. Now that was two shows before that. This is a historical. We're revolutionaries raising our voice. Subversive verse is our weapon of choice. We always draw a crowd. We're red and hot and proud. Silent, no, hell loud. The San Francisco mind troop. A tradition. July 4th in the mission. Actors and musicians build our stage and leave without a trace. With words for ammunition, we serve politicians. Egg on their face. Don't be Opie, changing droney. We're not scared to call our phonies. And we even got a Tony. Isn't it sublime? A new play every year. A treat for eyes and ears. Cause we're not that kind of mind. No, we're not that kind. Well, heck if I know. Maybe Freedom Land or something, something with back wine on. Eating it or 1600 Transylvania Ave. I like the red state and possibility. Steel Town was built to last. Treasure Island's a treasure. I saw seeing double twist and twice more bones to measure. And the costumes. Dragon Lady Armageddon Man. The incredible transforming sets of the puppetry of the land.
Next week on Tales of the Resistance, it's Jailbreak, a passion for justice. The story of two jailed protesters, one an Asian American Antifa activist, the other a fabulously fiery black drag queen. Romance and revolution are in the air, but when the jail is attacked by right-wing insurrectionists, our two heroes are caught up in a jailbreak. The Tale of the Black Fox was written and directed by Michael Jean Sullivan and featured Jerrion Monroe, Andre Amaradico, Keiko Shimasato Carrero, Michael Jean Sullivan, and starred Valina Brown as Angelica Phoenix. Eyeball on History was written and directed by Michael Jean Sullivan and features Michael J. Asbury, Michael Jean Sullivan, and Almost Glick as Chip Bannister. Music for this episode was written by Daniel Savio with Jewel McMillan on bass, David Rokish on drums and percussion, Dylan Jennings on woodwinds, Daniel Savio on keyboards and Aya Rokish on oboe. Tales of the Resistance theme music was written by Daniel Savio and produced by Dred Scott. The San Francisco Mime Troupe theme song was written and produced by Jeremy Mage and Daniel Savio and performed by the San Francisco Mime Troupe. Audio engineering and sound design for Tales of the Resistance is by Taylor Gonzalez and stage management is by Karen Rock. Francisco Mime Troupe is a worker-run, multi-ethnic, multi-generational collective of activist artists committed to overthrowing capitalism one musical comedy at a time. And one of these days, we will get it right. Each summer, we tour our shows at a price every member of the working class can afford. Free! With so many insurrectionist, reactionary shenanigans going on, the Mime Troupe needs to make sure our message of art, activism, and social justice is part of the resistance. And even though the pandemic is fading, the Mime Troupe still wants to keep our audiences as safe as possible. So we decided Nothing says revolutionary fervor and safety like radio plays. And for those wondering how a radical theater can survive these capitalist times, it's because of you. The troupe doesn't take corporate sponsorship. You'll never see the AT&T or Comcast mime troupe. How could we show the hypocrisies of capitalism if we were in bed with a capitalist? So instead, we are in bed with you, our fellow workers. Let's snuggle. And after that, you can support the troupe by visiting our website, sfmt.org. Thank you to the San Francisco Arts Commission, SF Grants for the Arts Hotel Tax Fund, California Arts Council, USPPP, the Flyshacker Foundation, the Bernard Osher Foundation, the Zellerbach Family Foundation, Kali Austin, the Don Stevens and Nicole Bellotti Laugh and Love Fund, this public radio station, and listeners like you. Thank you for listening, and remember, in one week it'll be time once again for Tales of the Resistance!